exercise uh, two, which is about work energy and power. Uh, a diver climbs some steps on a fixed platform and above the surface of the water. The mass of the diver is 65 and the platform is 8 meter above the surface of the water. So this is the mass of the diver and he is 8 meter above the surface. This is the surface of the water. He's 8 meter above it. We have to calculate how much gravitational potential energy has been increased as he climbed the like Diver is here. How much gravitational potential energy is have? So if you want to calculate the gravitational potential energy, uh, the formula of gravitational potential energy is MGH. So GP is GH. The mass of the diver is 65. The gravity, if it is written 9.81 on the page, it will take 9.81. Otherwise, it will take as a 10 and then multiply by what's the answer for this? 65 into 5,200. 5,200 so 5, joules of uh, gravitational potential energy this diver. That's a gravitational potential energy. Next is the speed with which the diver hits the surface of water. Ignore any air resistance. So, whenever, uh, like example, energy transformation, what will the energy transformation as the diver jumps from a height of 8 meter? He's having a gravitational potential energy at the top. Which form of energy he will have just before hitting the water surface? As he's moved just before it. So it's his gravitational potential energy. You, you can use a mic or a chest. His gravitational potential energy changed to kind of so it means whenever we need the speed, we have the potential energy and we need the speed, we'll consider that there's no loss of energy, the gravitational potential energy all turn into kinetic energy. So we can say the kinetic energy is equals to gravitational potential energy. What is kinetic energy? The kinetic energy is half mb squared. And what is gravitational potential energy is MGH. So M will cancel with M because that is common. So if there is no loss of energy, you can use this formula that 0 0.5 V square is equals to GH. This is a formula. It's only valid if there is no loss of energy. You can solve in this manner or you can also consider as a gravitational potential energy equals to kinetic. So the gravitational kinetic energy is half mb square. So 0 0.5 mb square. The gravitational potential energy we calculated for 200. Now we need the speed. So we have to just simplify. This will be 0 0.5. The mass of the diver, that is 65. Speed is v square. And 5200. We need the speed, like this is a speed squared, is equals to 5,200 divided, but this is multiplied, the side will be divided. So 0 0.5 into 65. And just at the last, because we need the speed, we don't need speed squared. So we have to take up under root both sides. So 5,200, 0 0.5, What's the answer for this? The final answer for the speed.
822. It should be less than it. So like after taking a route, 5,200. Yes, I did. 5,200 into 0 divided by, because 65 into 0 0.5, that will be 30. Sir, it's uh, shown 12.6. Uh, yeah, because yeah, this is 5,200. This will be 32.5. Then take a root. When you take a root of this, it should be because 800 is a very high value to jump from 8 meter. Because practically it does not match the description. So that's why uh, when you simplify, it should be 5,200 divided by 32.5 and then take a root afterwards and it should be 12 points so 12.6 is the speed at which the diver will hit the ground so energy transformation we took like he was there at on the platform and he jumped into the pool so his gravitational potential energy Is he's having a potential energy of 5,200 joules. That is a gravitational potential energy. When he jumps, all of the gravitational potential energy turn into kinetic energy. We assume there's no loss of energy. So better to solve step by step. Like the kinetic energy will be gravitational potential, so which is 5,200. The kinetic energy is half... 0 0.5 mv square is equals to 5200. 0 0.5 is and the mass is 65 for the so 0 um, like this will be 0 0.5 into 65 is equals to b square 5200. Then 0 0.5 into 65 when you multiply them that will be equal to 32.5 V square is equal to 5,200. 32.5 is multiplied, other side will be divided. So V square is 5,200 divided by 32.5. What is the answer for this? The 200 divided by 32.5? 12.6. Yes, I got it. And, no, and when... When you take a root, that will be 12 points. Like after taking but a root, yeah. It's 160 then. Huh? Yeah, 160. So basically, 5200 divided by 32.5 is 160. But we don't need V square. We need V, then we take a root. So when we take a under root of 160, that will be 12.6 meter per second. The next one, in another dive from a same platform, the divers perform a somersault. What does it mean? Like example, he roll in air when he's falling. He straightened and again enter. Yeah, that's right. The speed only depends on the gravity and the height from which he, he, he jumps. So, Basically, what happened? Example, the same diver. I am drawing the figure twice so that explain the idea. So, the first one, he jumps. The second one, he jumps from the same height, but he's he's doing a somersault, like he's rolling in air. The question is, we have to compare the speed at which, uh, whether it will be equal, whether it will be less, whether it will be greater. So the correct answer that the speed will be same. Why speed will be same? Because that speed depends on the initial gravitational potential energy. Both cases, 
he will have the same gravitation because he's jumping from the same height. So both cases, he's having the same gravitational potential energy, 5,200, and here also 5,200. So even he roll in air or even without rolling, but he jump. If this was 12.6 meter per second, this will also be 12.6 meter per second. So it is independent how he moves through the air. Practically, it will be different because there is an air resistance. But as they already mentioned, ignore the effect of air resistance. So if there is no air resistance, then both cases he will land or he will hit the water surface with the same speed of 12.6. Energy can be lost in the if the water is passing, but that is bef not before because the that is the kinetic energy before. So kinetic energy before hitting the water surface cannot be lost by the water to the water. It when it he, he hits the water, then it will be lost. This is a kinetic energy or the speed at before he hits the ground, hits the water. Is it uh, clear this one? Yes, sir, clear. The next question, uh, use the screen annotation to complete this. Use the screen annotation to complete this. Solar energy is not polluting, like this line should not be there. So solar energy is renewable and it's not polluting. Natural gas is not renewable, it's polluting. Coal fired power stations are polluting. State one advantage of using a coal as a source. If you burn the coal and produce energy, yeah, that's cheap. Or does it's reliable? Can be used on a large scale, produce large amount. Relatively cheap, widely available, produce use can be used on a large scale and always available. Like it's reliable, you can also say. The next one, a cold power, fire power station generate electricity at night. When it is not needed, some of the energy is stored by pumping the water up to a mountain lake. When there is a high demand of electricity, the water is allowed to flow back through the turbine. On one occasion, 2 into 10 puff, 2.05 exponents, 8 kilogram of water is pumped up through a vertical distance of 500 meter. Calculate the weight. How to find the weight? Weight is mass multiplied by gravity. So W is equals to mg. Mass is 2.05 to times power 8. If I take gravity as 10, so this will become 2.05 into times power 9. And the unit of the weight is Newton. Next, we need the gravitational potential energy, Gb, that is mgh. So mass into gravity into height. The
The gravitational potential energy is mass into gravity into height. So the mass is 2.05 exponent 8. The gravity is 9.8 or it depends on if they mention 10, you can take 10 and multiply by 500. What's the answer? If you take, I'm solving the question for take, by taking 10 all here just to make the calculations easy. So how much is a gravitational potential energy? One point zero to exponent twelve. So exponent twelve is called mega. So I can write here one point zero two to the best part twelve joules or one point zero two mega joule. It's the same thing. The electrical energy used uh, to pump the water up to a mountain is 1.2. So like there is a pump because what we are doing, we are pumping the water high up to the lake. So there's a pump. The pump take electrical energy because like pump is working with electricity so it will take electrical energy. The electrical energy used to pump the water up to the mountain lake is 1.2 exponent 12. Only 6.211 joules of electrical energy is generated when the water is released. Calculate the efficiency of this energy storage scheme. Like how much energy is being stored by this one. Look. What pump is doing? It is taking an electrical energy and then it stored the water at a certain height. And then when we allow this water to flow from a certain height, it again generate electricity. Like rotating a turbine, which is connected to generator, produce electricity. But energy, the electrical energy which the pump take, that was 1.2 into times power 12 joules. But the electricity which is reach, like pump push the water to certain height and when we need electricity, we allow this water to flow and again it generate electricity. That electricity or that electrical energy is 6.2 into times power 11 joules. We need efficiency. So efficiency is a useful output. Remember, always output is always less than input. Like numerator will always be less than the denominator. What happened to the rest of the energy? The rest of energy is wasted in different forms. You don't have a system which is 100% efficient. There are always losses in the system. So 6.2 is a useful what we get of the electrical after the whole process. But what electrical was height was 1.2 into 10 power 12. And then multiplied by 100. What is the efficiency of this pump? Like this whole system, the scheme? 51. So it is 51% efficient. So it's taking a lot of energy and only 51% is what we get back. Like if I use a simple, these are very big numbers, practical numbers, but if I use a simple number, say uh, there, is, there was a pump which used electrical energy of say 100 joules. 51.7, so 51.6, so yes, you will say 51.7 or 52 also, you can say, not 51. So, yes, you can also write efficiency as a ratio. 
But if you're writing as a ratio, you don't have to multiply by 100. So, like example, a pump was taking electrical energy of 100 joules. It pumped the water, it stored the water in a tank. And when we allow this water to flow back and generate electricity, like example, we were only getting 50 joules. So, what is the efficiency of this process? It was taking in 100 and giving out 50. So, efficiency is a useful divided by total into 100. So that will be about 50%. Same thing happened because the numbers are big. So what it was taking in, what it was taking in is six, uh, 1.2 into 10 to power 12. What is giving out is 6.2 exponent 11, which is a smaller value. So how to know how much it's efficient? It is 6.2 into 10 to the power 11 divided by 1.2 into 10 to the power 12 and then into 1 million, uh, into 100, not 1 million. So that will be 51.7 or you can also say 50. Is it a clear discussion? So I'll try to solve like about half of this exercise and remaining half you will solve when I'll give you as a homework. That time you'll solve the remaining. In question eight, another uh, box which is having a weight of 1,500 and it moved vertically to a height of three. So we have the force, we have the distance, how I'll get the work. How to find the work done? It's multiplied by distance. So it's force multiplied by distance. Better write a formula first, then substitute 1500 multiplied by 3. That's equal to 4500, and the unit of the work is joule or newton meter. Some student directly write the answer that you will not score the full mark, you'll score only one if you write only the answer directly. The crane takes 2.5 seconds to raise. P meter calculate the power. So power is work divided by time. It's a continuation. So work done is 4,500 and time is 2.5. 4,500 divided by 2.5. Uh, how much power? 1,800. So 1,800 and the unit of the power is what? So capital W. Question nine is a similar one. Another athlete using different spring, he exert an average force of 400, which enable the spring to stretch 0.21 meter. What is the work done by this athlete when he's stretching the spring? So Mr. Force by distance equal 400 by 0 0.21. Yeah. Equals 84. So 84 joules of uh, energy or 84 uh, joules is a work done. She's able to extend the spring by this amount and release 24 times in 60 seconds. Calculate the power while doing the exercise. So power is work divided by time. For once, this is the total work done. But 24 times, what will the total work done? It will be 84 multiplied by 24. Because for one time, so for one time, it is 84. For 24 times, it is 84 into 24. And the total time is 60. So what's the power? Thirty-three point six watts. 
So the power here is 33 watts. Okay. So this is figure 2.1 shows a rock that is falling from the top of a cliff into a river. The mass of the rock is 75. The acceleration of a free fall is 10. What is the weight? Acceleration of a free fall is a value of the gravity. So weight is mass into gravity that is 75 into 10. So 750 Newton. The rock falls from rest to a distance of 15 meters. Calculate the kinetic energy just before hitting and show your work. So, the rock is dropped from a height of 15 meters. So, this total height is 15 meters. At this point, which form of energy the rock will have? The rock will have the gravitation potential energy, GPE. The question is, calculate the kinetic energy before it hits the ground, it hits the bottom. What we assume, we assume there is no air. Uh, there will be, but we assume there is no air. So, all the potential energy will be equal to kinetic. So, first we find gravitational potential energy, which is MGH. So mass is 75, gravity is 10, and the height is 50. This will be the gravitational potential energy. So we calculate the gravitational potential energy. Uh, what's the answer? 15 into 75 into 10. Eleven thousand two hundred. So the gravitational potential energy is 11,250 joules. So, what we consider, and if they did not mention anything about air, we assume that all of its gravitation convert into kinetic. So, we just find that the kinetic energy will be how much? The kinetic energy will be equal to gravitation potential energy. Gravitation potential energy is 1,250, so kinetic will also be C. So here, the rock hits the water suggests what happened to kinetic energy during the impact. So what happened to the kinetic energy of this rock when it hits the water surface? Which one energy transformed? Heat and sound. So it will produce heat energy, it will produce sound energy, even you can mention wave because it will produce ripples or water waves. So the kinetic energy will transform or you can also mention it turn into kinetic energy of the water as well. So heat and the kinetic energy transform into heat, transform into sound and transform into kinetic energy of the water, or you can also say make waves. So it will produce heat, sound, it's of three marks, so we have to mention end wave. Why end wave? Because it's of three marks, so three energy transformation we have to mention. So when the stone hits the water, it produces sound, it produces heat, and it produces kinetic energy of the water, which is called a wave energy. So the transformation of the kinetic energy is to heat, sound, and to wave. If you mention heat and sound, you will score two marks because the question is of three marks. So one mark is for wave energy or the water. So according to marks, you should write down. So in this question uh, 11, an electric pump is used to raise the water from a well 
So this is the electric pump. It is uh, lifting the water to a certain height and then pushing the water. The pump does a work done to raise the water. State the equation that could be used to calculate the work done in raising the water. How we can calculate a work done? So work done will be equal to force multiplied by distance. Even you can mention the formula for gravitational potential energy as the work done is to raise the object. So work done is force into distance or whenever you are lifting an object, the force is equal to weight of an object. And weight is mass into gravity. So work done for lifting an object is equal to mass into gravity into height. But if you mention this, you will also score the mark. The water is raised through a vertical distance of 8 meter. The weight of the water is 100 Newton in 5 seconds. What is the work done? So that is force into distance. The force is 100. The distance is 8. So 800 joules. Then the power, uh, we need per, the power is uh, work divided by time. So 800 divided by 5. 800 divided by 5. So that's equal to 160 volts. The energy transfer by the pump to the water is greater than in answer in 1. Suggest the additional energy use like we calculated the energy used is 800 to lift this water from the well. But in reality, Tiggle, the pump is applying more energy because you can clearly see in the, you can see in the figure, pump is not only lifting the water, pump is also pushing the water forward. So, 800 is used to lift the water and the remaining extra energy is used to push the water. So, you can mention, uh, here they ignore any uh, reference to heat. Why they ignore any reference to it? Because the figure is given, the figure is more clear, like it's not, the pump is not only really lifting the water. If the discussion was without figure and you mention like some of the energy is wasted in the form of heat, that is acceptable. But right now, because the figure is given, and according to the figure, first the pump is lifting the water and then pushing the water. Maybe the pump is lifting, need 800 joule and pushing it 200 joule. So how much energy is there? 1000 joule of energy is actually used by the pump. So here we cannot say friction, why? Because the figure is given, so we have to use the reference of the figure. If there was no figure in this question, then you can mention like the friction between the parts in the pump may be responsible for using more energy. That, that will be acceptable, but not acceptable here as the figure is given. So any reference of heat, sound, friction is not acceptable. In question 12, a student wishes to uh, work how much power he used to lift her body when climbing flight of stairs. Her body uh, mass is 60. The height of stair 3 meter. She take 12 seconds to walk up stair. Like student is moving, climbing the stairs. 
at three meters. She starts from here, and she stops. How much work is done? So work done is force into distance. Whenever, as I mentioned, whenever we lift an object, when we move object vertically, the force is always equal to weight. So this is a mass. Mass is not the force. Weight is the force. So this will be 600. The distance move is 3. When we multiply, 6 multiplied by 3, 18. So it will be 1800 joules. Then how much power she developed? Power is work divided by time. So 1,800 joule of work and the time she took to climb the stairs, that is 12. So 1,200, 1,800 divided by 12. Uh, that's equal to 150 watt or joules every second she produced. So don't substitute the mass, substitute the weight. Whenever an object is move on the vertical plane, you have to use the weight as a force. At the top of the stairs, she is having gravitational potential energy. Describe the energy transformation as she walk back down the stairs and stop. She, so she is here. Gravitation potential energy. She is walking back. What is the energy transformation like? Which form energy change? So initially, she is having a gravitational potential. As she walk back, the gravitational potential energy will decrease or transform. So gravitational potential energy. But we have to mention the energy transformation from top to bottom. So first she's having gravitation. Then uh, the reason uh, like we just need the energy transformation from top to bottom, not in between. So at the top she's having gravitational potential. The bottom, because she stopped, you cannot mention kinetic, so it will only be heat. In between, kinetic is there, but because they mentioned from top to bottom, so at the top, it will have GPE, and at the bottom, it will have heat energy. Yeah, there will be sound energy, but that will be when she is walking down the stair. But they mention she stops. So when she stops, she will not produce a sound. When she is walking, she will produce sound. So like gravitational potential energy decreases, then there is some sound energy, there is some kinetic energy, but we need from top what is the energy and what is the energy at the bottom. So at top, gravitational potential. At bottom, because she stopped, she's not moving, so she will have heat 